Welcome to our video on logarithmic scales. Uh, logarithms actually show up a lot in the natural world. Uh, they're very important in a lot of the sciences. We're going to take a look at four of the more useful and more common uses of logarithmic scales, starting with the pH scale. You've all heard of pH somethings. Uh, pH level is really just a measurement of hydrogen ions uh, in a unit of measurement, right? So it's it's H plus positive hydrogen ions in moles per liter, and a mole is just a unit of measure that's equal to this um, astronomically large number of atoms, right? 10 to the 23rd is a huge, huge number. But in any case, that's what it means to have a pH uh, level of six. It's the negative log of a certain number of atoms is going to equal six. Here's a simple example. Calculate the nearest tenth of pH value of grapefruit juice if we know that the number of hydrogen ions in this, in the moles of the, the liquid is 6.23 times 10 to the negative 4. So all you have to do is plug everything in, right? Here's our, our basic formula. This is the number of hydrogen ions. So that's where 6.32 times 10 to the negative 4 goes. Then all you do is basically work it out to get a number, right? You're just taking a log of something. So you're taking the log of something times something. You have to remember that rules of logarithms, log of m times n equals log m plus log n. And that's where this comes from. We just, just basically, it's kind of like distributing the log, but it's not distributing. It's this is a function. So a function of this becomes these two things. So log of 6.32 plus log of 10 to the negative 4. Don't forget they both right still have a negative on them. Now what happened here is we just distributed the negative sign. Log of 10 to the negative 4. Well, remember, log base a of a to the x just equals x and log is base 10 so log base 10 of 10 to the negative 4 this whole thing I'll highlight it for you this whole yellow piece just equals negative 4 but then this negative distributes with that and that's why we have plus 4 here at the end but you still have the negative on this log piece then all you gotta do is plug this in your calculator take the negative log of uh, 6.32 add 4 to it and that's what you get basically a pH uh, level of 3.2. So grapefruit has a pH level of 3.2, and that's why it stinks so bad when it squirts into your eyes. In this example, uh, we're still dealing with the same formula, but we're just kind of working in the other direction because now we want to find the hydrogen concentration in beer if its pH value is 4.82. So we're given pH, we put that in for pH, and we need to solve for hydrogen. So if we're going to try and solve for hydrogen, that means we need to get hydrogen out of this function, right? It's trapped inside the log function. And what does on logarithms are exponentials, right? To undo a log, you have to raise something to a power of this. And since this is base 10, you do 10 to that and 10 to this, right? To keep them equal. And these undo each other. And that's how you get just hydrogen on the left. And on the right, you get 10 to this. Now to go from here to here, it was just a matter of uh, trying to get our answer uh, in scientific notation. I remember scientific notation is a one digit number, right? So a one's place and then some things after the decimal and then times a power of 10. If you work this out in the calculator, you'll see it's a very, very small number, this negative exponent. And you could do that and then you could kind of um, put it back into scientific notation or you can do this where you can work with uh, rules of exponents. We know that x to the n times x to the m is x to the n plus m. And that's what's happening here is we let negative 4.82 equal negative 5 plus 0 0.18. This becomes my n plus m. So by substitution, I can now think of it as 10 to each of these powers. That's where it comes from. But I think it'd be a lot easier to stick this in your calculator, get 0 0.000, 0 
zero one five one and then go all right that's one point five one to the one two three four negative five much easier okay one last example with ph is um, how about comparing figuring out how much more acidic one thing is to another so we're kind of looking for a ratio comparison of one acid level to another so if you have a pH value of three um, how more acidic is that acid rain than with regular rain which has a pH value of six okay again here's our formula to remind us a pH value of three just means that three equals some negative log of some hydrogen amount and if we wanted to solve for this hydrogen amount just like before we would have to take both things and make them a power of 10 but we can't do 10 to the negative log so we would multiply both sides by negative 1 first and now 10 to the log these go away and that's how you get h is just equal to 10 to the negative 3 do the same thing with the 6 and that's how you get 10 to the negative 6 for ordinary rain now to figure out how much more acidic one thing is the other we're talking about a ratio so we have 10 to the negative 3 over 10 to the negative 6 which remember rules of exponents x to the n over x to the m equals x to the n minus m so negative 3 minus a minus 6 becomes plus 6 10 cubed or a thousand or a thousand times more acidic okay our next example of logarithms is the Richter scale which is what we use for uh, the intensity of earthquakes here's the basic formula for that where the magnitude of an earthquake is a function of its intensity defined by the log of i over i sub zero where i sub zero is a zero level earthquake so magnitudes are always kind of based on how much stronger they are than um, no earthquake at all or another earthquake type of thing so let's compare the intensity of the mexico city earthquake which was an 8.1 to the San Francisco earthquake which is 6.9 we're gonna let I sub M be the Mexico City one and I sub S be the San Francisco one just so we can keep track of our numbers okay so again looking at our basic formula we have a formula on the left and a formula on the right for our two um, earthquake scales I'll remind you that our earthquake uh, scale thing is M is log of i over i sub zero so this is i am because this is mexico city and this is san francisco and then all you gotta do is plug everything in they told us that um you know what we're looking for the 8.1 and the 6.9 and then we go from there if we're trying to solve for these ims and is's we need to get them out of the logs just like before so we have to do the 10 to some stuff right on both sides to un undo these and that's how we get this and then 10 to the 8th right this and 10 to the 6.9 and then the last thing is just multiply both sides by i sub 0 to get each thing all by itself some simple algebra now to figure out how much stronger one is than the other just like before we have to stick it into a ratio so it's this one over this one the i sub 0's cancel we're left with this rules of exponents again gives us 10 to the 1.2 if we multiply both by one i sub s we get i sub m all by itself is this times i sub s and if you put this in your calculator you get 16 so that means the mexico city earthquake is roughly equivalent to 16 times the san francisco earthquake which means it's roughly 16 times worse right its magnitude was 16 times stronger and then we can talk about the energy in joules released by an earthquake is also on a logarithmic scale with this very simple formula of log of e equals 4.4 plus 1.5 m where m again is the magnitude um, of the scale the magnitude of the earthquake on the Richter scale if you wanted to actually solve for E, right, because you want to know what the energy output is, then you have to get E all by itself, which just like before, you have to do that. 
right? You have to tend to the whole right-hand side as a power. On the left-hand side, these go away, so you just have E. Tend to this plus this. Remember, so now it's, it's that rule of exponents again. X to the M plus N is really X to the M times X to the N. And that's where this comes from. 10 to the 1.5 M, that's this piece here. And then this is just a scientific notation representation of uh, this just equals 10 to the 4.4. So if you took that and, and uh, multiplied it all out, you'd get this big number, and then you could collapse it back down to 2.5 times 10 to the 4. That's where all that comes from. Using this table, we can work one last example, where we can look at the um, energy levels from these two earthquakes. So using the, the data, we know that the, the magnitude of the one earthquake was 7.8, the other one was 6.7. The energy in joules, as we saw before, is very simply 2.5 times 10 to the fourth times 10 to the 1.5 m, where m is the magnitude. And now it's just a very simple matter of plugging in some numbers. Plug in 7.8 for your 06 earthquake. Plug in 6.7 for your 1994 earthquake. And then if we want to know um, the energies of each, we could figure them all out individually. But what this question wanted to know was how much more energy was released. So again, we're doing another ratio. So here's the energy of one over the energy of the other. And the nice thing about doing this is you don't even have to do a lot of math because these cancel. And then if you simplify these two numbers, right, because now we've canceled that, simplify our two tops, and we again, we know the rule is top minus bottom, which is what we have here, so now we just have 10 to all of this junk. We can factor out the 15. Da, da. This is probably an easier way. I think it'd be easier to figure out what this number is, figure out what this number is, and then do 10 to this minus this. But in any case, it'll end up being about 45. 45 times stronger. All right, uh, our second to last kind of scale are logarithmic scales for measuring sound. So we know that the loudness of a sound measured in decibels is related to its intensity I by this following formula. But oftentimes we, we might want to know what the intensity of the sound is based on a decibel reading. So we kind of need the formula in, in two, two forms. So all we have to do is take this original formula and solve for the I. So the loudness L of a sound measured in decibels is related to its intensity I by this following formula. But sometimes we'd like to know what the intensity is based on its loudness. So we have the second formula, which is just this first one that's been algebraically solved for L. It's very simple. The first thing you would have to do right, to solve for I, we know that we have to get it out of the log. So we've got to get the log all by itself. You would divide both sides by 10 and have L over 10 equals log of I over I sub 0. Now to get rid of the log, you would do 10 to that stuff, and, and those would go away. So now you have 10 to the L over 10 equals I over I sub 0, and then multiply both sides by I sub 0, and there's your I sub 0 times 10 to the L over 10 equals I. Okay? Very simple. Same formula. You don't have to memorize both. Just know that you can always derive one from the other. And then I sub 0 is a constant. It's this constant. It's, uh, it's called the something of hearing. And then I sub 0 is this constant. It's, um, it's called the threshold of hearing. That's what TOH uh, stands for. And it's, it's basically the um, smallest level, the, you know, the lowest sound that the human ear can hear. Let's look at an example. How much more intense is a 65 decibel sound than a 42 decibel sound? Using our simple formula that's been solved for I, right? Because we're given the decibels. We're given the L. We want to know the intensity, so it's better to use this version. Plug in what we know. Here's I of 65, here's I of 64. If we want to know how much more intense 
something is to the other, just like before. We do a ratio, so this one over this, which reduces to this, right? All we did was take 65 and 42 divided by 10. The i sub zeros cancel. You're left with top minus bottom, simplify, throw it in the calculator about 200 times more. Calculate the intensity in watts per square meter of a sound of 73 decibels. So again, we're given something in decibels, we want to know its intensity. So this is just a simple matter of plugging it in, working it out, getting your answer there. If F is a frequency measured in hertz and F0 is a reference frequency, then the change in pitch, we'll call P of F, in cents, that's a, a unit of measure for um, sound, from F sub zero to F is given by this following uh, formula, again using logs, but in this case it's a log base two. So this is our first formula that's a different base. It's no longer our standard log of log base 10, it's now log base two, but really the applications are exactly the same. A jump of one perfect fifth gives a frequency increase of 50%, an equal tempered fifth going up one more time, is 700 cents. Find the difference in cents rounded to the nearest cent. Is the difference noticeable? So if the reference frequency is F sub zero and it is increased by 50%, then the new frequency is just the old frequency plus 50%, right? The new frequency is just F sub zero plus 50% of that. Well, that's just one times this plus a half times this or one and a half times the original one. So back to our uh, original formula that our function tells us it's equal to 1200 log base 2 of f over f sub 0, but f is just 1.5 f sub 0. So that's where this comes from. And then this divided by that gives you just 1.5. So now we just have 1200 log base two of 1.5. And to calculate this in our calculators, unless you have a fancy one, you can't do base two. So instead you have to do change of base. And if you don't remember, log base A of X is log base, whatever your new base is, call it C of X all over log base C, sorry, log base C of A. What you normally do is you wouldn't go from base 2 to some other base. You would normally go to base 10 or base E. So what normally happens is the formula is written this way. It's just log of X over log of a because here they just did a base of 10 for both or they'll call it natural log of x over natural log of a because they just changed it to log base e in this example we did regular log instead of natural log just because we're using regular log with all the others so you get log 1.5 over log of 2 now this is something you can throw in your calculator and you get 702 Okay, our last set of examples are dealing with uh, star brightness, magnitude of star brightness, and the apparent magnitude, right? If two stars of magnitude M1 and M2 have apparent brightnesses of B1 and B2, respectively, then the magnitude of the second one minus the magnitude of the first is equal to 2.5 times the log of the magnitude of the first divided by the magnitude of the second. So with that formula in mind, we can now tackle some questions that involve brightness. Let's say we want to compare the brightness of a magnitude 1 star with that of a magnitude 6 star. So we're going to let the second one be 6, the first one be 1, which means we have 6 minus 1. This 5 over 2 is just 2 and a half written as a fraction. You don't have to do that. Log of b1 over b2. These are what we don't know, right? Because we want to know, compare the brightnesses of them. So now, when you do 6 minus 1, you get 5. In order to solve for this, we got to get rid of this number. So we divide both sides by 2.5, or multiply both sides by 2 fifths, the reciprocal of this. And that's how we get 2 equals log of this. Now, again, to solve for the b's, we got to get rid of the log. So we have to do 10 to the power of each thing. 
these undo each other. We just get b1 over b2, and then we get 10 squared. So that means b1, if we multiply both sides by b2, is this, and b1 is 100 b2, or the star of magnitude 1 is 100 times brighter than a star of magnitude 6. So you see these magnitudes are just measurements of their brightness on a logarithmic scale. If you let m2 equal just m, and m1 equals 7.2, and then b2 equals 650b1, we can solve for the missing m. So here's m2 minus m1 equals 2.5 log of b1 over b2. But b2 by substitution is this, which is going to allow us to cancel out our b1s, which is what we've done here. But then what happens here? Well, 1 over 650 is just 650 to the negative 1. If you remember your rule of logs, log of x to the y equals y times log of x. So this power comes down in front, and that's where the negative 1 comes from here. Now this you can just slap into your calculator very easily. You technically could have done this in your calculator too, so there's really no point in having to do that. And then add the 7.25 over the other side to solve for m. Okay, and that's our last example of things to do with our logarithm scales.